in uh, this tutorial this is this is what we're going to create a baluster or a pillar now this could be uh, this technique could be used for uh, Roman pillars for instance but also like this baluster that could be used in a uh, uh, like a fence post or something like that okay hi and welcome uh, this tutorial is going to be about two things uh, well, the first thing is about the spin uh, the mesh spin and the second one is about the uh, modifier uh, the array modifier uh, so what I'm going to do is a, like a baluster or a, or a pillar of some kind uh, so the first thing I'll do is to delete this cube I press delete, enter to delete it. Uh, I press shift A to add a, I would like a plane. And that's okay, we'll keep it in, in that orientation. I'll press seven to get the top view so I can see it from above. Uh, I'll tab, I'll press tab to enter edit mode. Uh, right here, I will delete one of the edges. I uh, shift click the uh, vertices, press delete and select edge. Then I select the vertices and I can push them wherever I want. Now, okay, like this, this is not a uh, this is not a cylinder or anything like that, but we're going to create a cylinder out of these four vertices. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, uh, the most simplest way to do that is actually to press I can press A to select all of the vertices and then I'll go to the tools menu over here uh, select spin. Now what that does is that it extrude, you can see that this is the extrude menu uh, it extrudes these four vertices in a, a spinning motion. Uh, now we have to control that spinning motion because now it doesn't look very doesn't look very good. It kind of twirls into a cylinder if you just increase the uh, the rotation. Uh, now the angle is set to 90 degrees. Now if we increase that to 360 degrees, it kind of is like a cylinder, but you have to control what kind of orientation the cylinder should have. Now if you remember we have uh, the the vertices are in a top view you can see in a top view and that's how we want the cylinder to be and if we look at the y-axis now that's the uh, the core, the center of the cylinder at least that's how I've imagined it to be so we'll, we'll be able to look down the hole from below okay so we have to uh, set the the main orientation or the axis of uh, the spin in the y uh, direction so we'll add we'll put one on the y-axis and we'll set zero on all the others and then we can increase the angles again and voila you can see we have something forming a cylinder as we increase this to 360 degrees and this is very low poly you can see that it's like nine faces on this one uh, and if you want to increase that you want a high more high poly model you just increase that and you'll get uh, more faces uh, to the cylinder perfect and what we could do right here to get some kind of structure or um, uh, additional detailing on, uh, uh, on on this cylinder thing uh, if you want a pillar that has uh, kind of bumps or anything like that uh, you could uh, for instance increase this to let's say 32 so we'll have something more to work with and then we'll uh, yeah that's pretty much it and then we'll go and simply 
select vertices right here and we could just press G to grab G and then just move these vertices out like so and you have to do this wherever you want to bump G you could do this with a bit more sophistication if we go to wireframe mode for instance I'll press, press 1 to get it directly from below and I can press control left click to select a lot of vertices uh, this way I can select more of them more of them more of them like there's a thousand ways to do the same thing and this is one way to solve the problem that I had uh, I'm, I'm soon gonna show you another way but this is one way and uh, when you've selected all of these you can just make sure that you have 3d cursor as a pivot point and then you can press s for scale s for scale and then you get the scale and you just pull them out using uh, the, the centered origin uh, the cursor which is the cursor is located at uh, 0 0.000, 000 at XYZ so that's perfect so you just pull it out from the center of the object of, now of course the 3d cursor has to be at the same center of the object as the object is okay enough of that uh, but this okay this solves the problem but it wasn't very neat uh, and you have to edit all of these individually or you have to at least select them all and do some kind of uh, scaling or things like that but as soon as you want to do something a bit more complicated this isn't very practical uh, so I'll show you another way uh, let's uh, go back to what we had and I'll, again I tab into edit mode I'll delete that edge press delete select edge and I'll go press 7 to get top view I'll grab that with the G then move it around select press G move it around okay um, now maybe we want a more sophisticated look on how this bump should look and it's more convenient for us to do that once uh, so we'll create one of those bumps and then we'll make duplicates that goes around forming the cylinder okay great uh, so what do we do we can select uh, bottom view can select them all like that and then we can push I mean the spinning was simply extruding right so we'll do the same thing we'll uh, press E to extrude we'll press R to rotate and since we're in a bottom view we get we get a, a rotating motion going from uh, from the center of the object through the Y axis since we're looking from below uh, and we can we can still control exactly how far this rotation you can see down down in the left corner you can see how many degrees I'm rotating it but I can actually control that so if I press minus one zero you get minus 10 degrees uh, press enter to to get it there okay once again extrude rotate minus one zero enter extrude rotate minus one ten enter and that's it okay so we have a a section of cylinder that is 30 degrees so in in a complete lap what does that give us it's uh, like uh, 12 12 times 30 is 360 okay so we get 12 the 12 sections like these so if you want eight bumps you should go 360 divided by eight whatever that is okay uh, enough of that and now 
uh, we can start to modify these bumps individually. So we'll grab uh, a uh, grab a vertice and we'll place it wherever we want to. We can go and set the pivot point for the medium point so we'll actually know what we're moving around. Uh, I want that one there and that one over there. So it's kind of asymmetrical. That might not be what you want but in this case I'll, I'll settle for that. And I'll move this one down here so the actual thing will kind of look like it's curved. Okay, that might be cool. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. But it's, I mean, this is just a proof of concept. You can create whatever you want. Okay, now we have a section uh, that we can rotate. Great, so uh, what we could do, I mean, there's a thousand, as I said, there's a thousand, uh, there are, there's a thousand ways of doing the same thing. Uh, one way of doing this is I press 1 to get into uh, bottom view and uh, uh, I could press A to select everything and then I could push uh, shift D to duplicate. Now I've created a copy of this element and while having created a copy I want to move it and I, uh, sorry, uh, I need to uh, change the pivot point first. So I'll change the pivot point to the 3D cursor and now uh, now I can rotate this new object, the duplicate object. So simply as I did the last time, rotate uh, R, I press R to rotate and then I press minus 3, 0 to rotate it 30 degrees. Boom. And once again, shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, minus 3, 0 to rotate. And I could do that the entire lap around. Okay? And we get this. I can do this 12 times and we'll get the, the complete cylinder with all these bumps that we're looking for. And uh, one thing to remember though is that we've created, I mean this vertice is, is actually two vertices. You See that? I'm clicking and I'm selecting two. So if I uh, control left click I can select both of them and you can see here we have up here two vertices selected. Um, this means that we have duplicates. So how do we get rid of duplicates? Well we uh, click A to select everything and then right down here we have remove section and we have remove doubles. So I'll just press remove doubles and it says removed eight vertices. Great. So now we don't have any more uh, vertices. I press A to unselect and you can see we only have single vertices everywhere. Great. Now that's one way to do it. But if I change my mind later and say, ah, oh, this didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it, uh, then if I change something here, and I want the same change over here, this will become very difficult to keep synchronized, right? Uh, so what we want is actually to have some kind of modifier rotating this. Uh, now we could, well, my first reaction was, okay, we'll use the spin. Uh, but no, we can't use the spin, I'll show you. Uh, press 1 to look from uh, below and I'll select all of these that we made extra. I'll delete those, I'll delete the vertices. Good, so now we have the original object right here. And if I select it, AA and uh, bottom view, press 1 in the numpad to get bottom view. And if I use 
spin again uh, you can see it 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 doesn't okay I'll press here 12 because I know it's 12 no no that's not what I want it doesn't look anything like what I want so it just it looks like it takes the one of these like the edges or something rotates that or extrudes that 12 times for the 360 degrees maybe I should do 330 no doesn't help you get you get one at the end you get one at the end but you don't get no nope that's not a solution okay we can't use the spin uh, what next we'll go back to okay this is the original object great now what well now it's the second thing I want to show you is the array modifier uh, so we'll add the it's on the modifiers you have this object selected add modifier and you press array and what this does is actually it creates duplicates as many as you want you have a count meter here that says how many duplicates you want uh, and we have to control that somehow because now we only have a relative offset which is uh, one on the I guess it's the x-axis uh, if I change that to XYZ so Z axis zero x <coughs> then we get it in, in the Z uh, direction instead but that doesn't help us we want it to rotate so what we do is we need a object offset and uh, we still have the uh, let's tap out of edit mode okay we're in object mode now we can we see here the 3d cursor it's still at 0 0 0 so it's perfect origin now I want to add a a uh, an empty I want to add an empty plane axis okay so now I have an empty placed in the middle and we'll just use this empty to control how uh, these uh, how the array modifier will use uh, this object okay so we'll go back to that object the ob uh, modifier we'll see here use object offset and we'll use the empty nothing happens that's because we have to do something we have to add a modification uh, to uh, or a brother we have to use a what's it called a trans transformation transform yeah we have to transform it uh, so once again the axis that we're looking for is the y-axis so if we rotate it you can see if we go back to uh, this one again and we'll add we wanted 12 right to get entire lap and we'll go back to the empty and you can see we rotated it 81 degrees that's not right we wanted 30 degrees to just point it at the right direction and voila we have created a pillar or a baluster where we have only created a single segment of that baluster and we've been able to rotate rotate that segment or spin that segment around 360 degrees and the real benefit of using this this technique is that if I go back into edit mode tab into edit mode I can change one of the vertices and you can see all of them are following this so you can still tweak this you can add modifications to it and 
it's all good it's all good so that that's pretty much the uh, the technique and afterwards you could uh, add another modifier say for instance a subsurf modifier uh, subsurf modifiers to get it looking more smooth uh, maybe you want to add additional uh, do, 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 do. let's see tab into edit mode maybe you want to add more Uh, we could add a mean crease here to get that edge really crisp. Um, maybe if I... Oh well. We can fool around with this. We'll go into solid. And we could add a uh, smooth smooth shading smooth okay there there we go in order to get rid of these splits right here you have to uh, merge the array you can see this we have a checkbox to to actually merge the arrayed objects together uh, right now they're separate objects uh, so you can see there are uh, creases or uh, cuts between them especially since we added the uh, the subsurf modifier we've uh, managed to get uh, cuts in between the segments but if we uh, check the merge button you can see everything merges together and becomes one whole unity and the first to last you can see that you have a cut between the first segment and the last segment because that's the 360 degrees right there I'm adding and uh, taking away one element and if we do first and last then it's merged okay and uh, when this is done you could actually just go back in here and uh, uh, select a couple of vertices down here uh, all the vertices in this row and press E to extrude uh, press Y to control it in the y direction, to limit it in the y direction, and uh, uh, drag it, left click to select, uh, press, this is one of my favorite uh, commands, it's control R, it's a loop cut, so you can make a cut in, in, uh, uh, in a bunch of vertices, control R again, left click to select, drag where you want it, left click to select uh, now I can select these and since we have the uh, cursor object origin, pivot point uh, 3D cursor pivot point, we can scale it in the Z and X axis, Z and X axis only by pressing S to scale and then shift Y to uh, limit it to the X and Z axis so you could just get like a bulb thing going on down there okay looks pretty good uh, I think I'll add a few more details down here but uh, that's pretty much it for the tutorial I hope you could follow that uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up or uh, give me a comment or subscribe. Thanks. Bye.